In order for us to calculate the electric force acting on each alpha particle, we want to first understand the structure of those particles. The question tells us that each alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons. We probably remember that neutrons are neutral, they bear no charge, and it turns out that the only particles that influence the electric force are the charged particles, the protons, which are each positively charged. And so we can actually neglect the presence of the neutrons, that is superfluous information. We can come down here and draw a picture of the scenario. So here we have the two alpha particles drawn in red. Once again, they consist each of two protons, so we've drawn two positive charges inside of each alpha particle. And because each alpha particle contains two protons, we know that the charge on each one would be positive two E. We may remember that E symbolizes the elementary charge. So in other words, the first alpha particle, we'll call it Q1, has a charge of 2E, and the second alpha particle also has a charge of 2E. Now, before we can proceed, we need to convert those charges into a standard unit. We probably have learned in this chapter that E takes on a value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So in fact, when we say the charge is 2e, what we really want to do is say 2 multiplied by that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now if you want to actually work that out right now, 2 times 1.6 is 3.2. So we can actually finally write this charge as 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, and then the other alpha particle will bear the same charge, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Excellent. Now, we have a distance between the particles that was given as this value right here, symbolized by r, and now we're ready to apply Coulomb's law to calculate the electric force acting on each alpha particle. Here is Coulomb's law. All we need to do is multiply a constant by the magnitude of each charge, and then divide by the distance between them squared. So let's go ahead and set that up. Note that we have written the Coulomb constant right here for our reference. So the electric force would be F equals the Coulomb constant, which was 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9, and then the unit is Newton meters squared divided by Coulomb squared. Then we're going to multiply by Q1, which is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th, then multiply by Q2, which is the same value. So if you want, you can take a bit of a shortcut and just do 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th squared. You can square it because each charge has the same value. And then divide by the distance squared. Do not forget to square that distance. So it's 5 times 10 to the negative 15th meters, and then square that. I forgot to put a coulombs right there for the unit of charge. We can pick up our calculators and very carefully punch this in. When we do that, we're going to get a force of 36.8 newtons. And this would be the correct answer for the magnitude of force that is acting on each alpha particle. So part A has been solved. We can come back up here, and then they ask, what is the initial magnitude of the acceleration of the alpha particle? They give us the mass. And they give us the mass in this rather funky unit, 4.0026. And then we have U, which is an atomic mass unit. Why don't we actually talk about that first? Because that mass is not a standard unit of mass. And it turns out that one atomic mass unit is equal to this number of kilograms right here. So perhaps we would be wise to just convert this right off the bat. We can say again here that one atomic mass unit takes on a value of 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Now what you'll notice in setting up this conversion factor is that when we multiply the 4.0026 by this crazy number over here, the atomic mass units are going to cancel out. That's going to leave us with kilograms. So let's go ahead and figure out the number of kilograms there. And when we do that, we get about 664 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So that is the mass of each alpha particle, and that's what we're going to be using for part B. But to do that, we have to remember Newton's second law from Physics 101. So here's part B. We know that the force acting on the alpha particle would equal its mass times its acceleration. Since the question asks for acceleration, let's solve this for acceleration. We can divide both sides of the equation by the mass. And by doing that, the masses cancel out on the right-hand side. Now we can see that the acceleration is F divided by M. We'll just put the acceleration over here. So what we'll do is take the force that was acting on each alpha particle, which was the 36.8 newtons, and then divide that by the mass of the alpha particle, which we just converted above. That was 6.64 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So we'll punch this into our calculator. This is going to give us the magnitude of the acceleration, which turns out to be about 5.54 
times 10 to the power of 27, and then the unit of acceleration we recall is meters per second squared. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. Thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course, don't feel obligated. I appreciate you taking the time regardless to watch.